Welcome to our lecture online. Here we're going to integrate the sine and the cosine. Of course, we added one constant to the angle, so we have the sine of ax and the cosine of ax just to see how we deal with something like that. The best way to do this is, well, actually, you can do it in two different ways. You can say let u equals ax, and then, of course, du is equal to adx, or dx equals du over a, and then we substitute this and this back in the integral. So let's do it this way for the sine of ax and see what happens and then we'll see how we can more easily and more quickly do it using a, a different method. So first we're going to substitute, so this becomes equal to the integral of the sine of ax, so instead of ax we write u, so this becomes the sine of u, and instead of dx we write du over a. And then of course we can take the 1 over a outside integral sine, so this becomes equal to 1 over a, times integral of the sine of u times du, and this of course is a standard way of writing that, so we can say this is equal to 1 over a. Now the integral of the sine is the negative cosine because the derivative sine is the positive cosine, so that would be the negative cosine of u plus the constant of integration. Then we'll put the negative in front, and instead of u we write ax, and so this becomes negative 1 over a times the cosine of ax plus a constant of integration. So that's how we do that by replacing ax by u. Now what we can also do is to simply look at this and say well we have an ax here so we're going to take this move it over a little bit which means if we have an ax we need a proper differential which would be a dx and I'm missing the a. So I'm going to multiply this by a and divide by a. So this is simply a quicker way to do the same thing instead of going to this methodology right here, but we're accomplishing the same thing. We recognize the angle as being ax, and so therefore we need an a dx in order to integrate this. So now this becomes equal to 1 over a times, the integral of the cosine is the positive sine, so this becomes the sine of ax plus a constant of integration, which simply then get written to be 1 over a times the sine of ax plus a constant of integration. Notice we end up with the exact same result. Of course, this was the sine, this was the cosine, but you can see that if you can see through this by simply looking at it that way, then you can do the integral a lot faster and accomplish the same thing. And that's how it's done.